Hey there, friends, and welcome to Strive for Savvy, where we talk about all things Kajabi, marketing, and growing your online business. Now, today, I am gonna talk to you about a really cool tool that is available inside Google Analytics that can really help you to define your pipelines and your funnels and see exactly what kind of analytics are going on in each step of your funnels. Now, yes, inside Kajabi, we do have the Kajabi analytics, and those are really handy to look at. But at the same time, sometimes, especially if we're going into as a user or an admin into those, it's still tracking your use as well as your client's use. So sometimes, depending on how much you're in there, and especially when you're first getting started, that can skew the numbers just a little bit. And data is the main thing that we can use when we're making decisions and trying to figure out what's working and what's not working and what needs tweaked and what could be better. So when we look at the data, it gives us a lot of information when we know what we're looking for and how to read it. And the cool thing is we can track inside Google Analytics the various pieces of our funnel and what's working and what's not, and that really gives us great insights. So one of the tools that Google Analytics offers is something called goals. Now, goals are a little bit different than what we would normally think of from a goal perspective, but what it does is it gives us an outline of what it is that you're wanting to track and whether or not you hit that particular goal. So for example, we have several different things that we can do inside Kajabi, you know, or in Google Analytics rather. So the first thing, of course, you have to do is you have to have integrated Google Analytics with your Kajabi site and if you'd like more information on how to do that be sure to reference the last video that I did um, there will be a link up here for you where we're talking about Google Tag Manager as well as the various ways that you can connect Google Analytics and Kajabi um, be sure to check that out because if you've gone to the traditional Google Analytics Kajabi integration um, there's actually a, using Tag Manager could be a very very valuable alternative uh, because then you have all of your tags and all of your analytics and controlling the various things as you get more advanced in your, your tracking in one place. So be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. And today, once we have our analytics and everything set up, now we can go into specifics on telling Google Analytics what it is that we want the, to, to get data on, particularly on our funnels. So let's jump on into Google Analytics and that will show us um, how we do this and how to set it up. All right, so when you go into your Google Analytics dashboard, um, and of course this only works if you're in the goals, so to speak, is on the universal analytics. Um, so as I talked about in my last video, there's the Google Analytics 4, which is a fairly recent addition. Um, there's different tracking, so there's pros and cons to each of whether you use universal Universal Analytics or Google Analytics 4. Personally, I like to use both and I recommend using both because we can easily jump back and forth between the two. Uh, and we talked about that in the last video as well. So we want to then have our, um, our, our property set up is what it's called in Google Analytics. We have properties and then inside those properties are our views. Um, Google Analytics 4 does not have views. So if I go into my admin tab down here, we can very quickly see that I'm on a universal analytics view uh, because it actually has a third column. So if I go in here and I change to the Google Analytics 4, one of the things you'll notice is it, if we're in our admin, um, and it only has two columns instead of three. So we can simply then go in here and we can change our property and we'll go back to our universal analytics. And now we have this additional tab. Now, the cool thing is with Google Analytics, if you're in the universal analytics, we can set up different views. And I do recommend that you set up multiple views just because there's a couple things that we wanna do. One of them, of course, is we wanna keep our all website data, but we also then want to have um, a master view and a test data so that if we're doing different settings, um, then we're not affecting the overall data. And one of the settings, of course, is filters. We wanna filter out 
your IP address. So I don't want data on what I'm doing because I'm not my audience. I'm already in there. I'm in there almost daily on checking on different things and editing different things. And so we want to filter out our own activity. That's one of the things that Kajabi doesn't do on their analytics is filter out your own activity. Um, so that's one of the things that you definitely want to set up. Um, but today we're going to talk about goals and that's right here under this goal setting. So we have a couple different different options that we um, we can set up this you can see I already have a couple different um, goals that I've created for a couple funnels that are in the works that I haven't actually launched yet so you know we don't have any numbers here and that's one of the things that's really valuable is that the sooner you set this up the better so if you set up your goals as you're creating your funnel then your data will be complete rather than you know missing data from in the past now if it's a, an existing funnel that's okay it's better to start somewhere and start looking at your data so that you know what your conversion rates are you know where your hot button and your sticky buttons are in um, in your particular account and in your funnel this is where I've set up actually several other goals and one of them that you'll notice here and this is what's really cool is that we can do this one that's on session duration so one of the goals that I created was to set up a session duration um, for more than five minutes because I want to um, really help to increase how long people are spending on my site um, so I'm, I'm adding several elements that is engaging a viewer and getting them through a journey and giving them value points throughout that journey so that they're spending more time on the site rather than um, just coming and dropping off. And in creating those, if we go back to my um, analytics and my overall analytics, um, my average session duration right now, we've bumped it up by using these goals is over two minutes, which is uh, pretty impressive, I think, from the fact that you know industry standard, a lot of times people just come and go. So those are some of the things we can do. So for example, let's create a new goal and you can either use it from a pre-field configuration. I usually just go to custom uh, simply because then you can set it up as you as we go. So this is where then we're going to set up our name and um, you you it'll tell you here your goal slot ID. We can do up to 20 goals per view. So if you're going to do more than 20 different funnels or 20 different specific goals, then um, you would need to set up another view to be able to track that. Um, and this is just telling me which goal number ID and I can change this if I want to. Then we're gonna set what type of goal we want to do. So we can do a destination goal. So a destination goal is for your funnel. So this is where we want a goal to get them to that thank you page because that means that they purchased. And so our destination goal is saying, okay, so how many people actually made it to the thank you page? We can also do a duration. So that was the session duration one that I was just talking about. And we can set up for you know a specific number of minutes. Um, we can do page screens per session. So you can set that up as a goal to get people to do more than one page um, each time that they come to your site. This is not as necessary per se because if I was going to do um, if I was going to do a funnel, for example, I would set it up as destination. But there's certain occasions, for example, if you're doing um, a quiz and you don't have a specific destination, but the quiz then takes them to a, um, a landing page and then the landing page takes them to a sales page, well, then you might want to do something like page per uh, or screens per session. Or if you're a blogger and you're wanting to get people to um, spend more time on your site and go to several different blog articles, then you might want to set up something like a page per session um, type of goal. Then of course we have an event goal. So an event goal could be that they played a video or that they clicked on a link or something like that. But the most common one that you will use for pipelines and the most valuable in my opinion for a Kajabi user is the destination goal. And so what we do then is we do destination and then we can say what the goal is. So we can change it with begins with, regular expression or equals to. And typically what we'll do here is is to set up the specific 
um, destination of the thank you page or the destination page that you want to use as your funnel tracking. So this is like my success. So that could be the check after checkout, they go to a welcome page that then would be your destination goal. If it's an opt-in or a lead magnet funnel that you're wanting to track, then it would be your delivery page or your thank you page. So we set that up. Now the cool thing is too, we can set up a value. So we can turn this value on. So if this is a sales page conversion, then we put the dollar amount of the sale that when they hit, that when they have purchased, they make it to that thank you page, that is a value to you of a certain amount of money. So you can put that on there as well to help track your, your value conversions. And then what we wanna do is we wanna turn on the funnel option. So we set this up and then we're gonna set up maybe that this is the opt-in page and then we put in the URL of that page. And then we're gonna add and, and then is this required? So yeah, the registration page is a kind of a required step. So we're gonna turn this on. And then we're gonna add another step and this one might be the, um, the delivery page and then we'll put in um, another uh, URL or screen name there. And then maybe we'll add, if you have multiple steps of your funnel, you can add as many steps as you want to in here. And then you just simply click save. And now Google Analytics is going to track for us each step of the funnel. So for example, what we do then is if we go back into our conversions tab, there will be a goals and we can look at our overview on our goals and we can see what's going on with our goals, but we can also go to, this is what's really fun, is we can go to funnel visualization. And this is super, super cool because, now of course these are two different funnels that I haven't actually launched yet, but if we go into like for example this one, it's gonna show all of the different steps that I put into that particular goal and it's gonna tell us the analytics of how many people came into the registration page and then how many people went to the delivery page and then how many people went to the webinar, um, the next step of the goal. So you'll be able to see in a glance very detailed of where those conversions, like where those numbers came from, where the traffic came from, and then where they dropped off of your funnel. So for example, if you're getting traffic to your registration page, but they're not making it to the delivery page, they're not actually registering and opting in or making the sale, there's a problem in the copy or the, the information that you're putting forth on the registration page or the opt-in page or the sales page that you're tracking because that's telling me that that's where the disconnect is, that they're not making it to the next step. If they're dropping off on the next step, say you know your webinar delivery page, but they're not making it to the sales page, well then you're giving good information on your registration page, you're getting them into the webinar, or into your, your free offer, or whatever it is that you're putting there, and they're not making it to the next step, then that's where the, the break in the chain is, so to speak. So these kind of analytics, especially this funnel visualization is fantastic, at least in my opinion, because I'm kind of a visual person, I love seeing it kind of mapped out like this. So we'll be able to see all kinds of different information, and that is what gives us information to know exactly what we need to do, what's going on, where the problem is, so that we can make some tweaks, test it again, look at the analytics again, see if we're seeing an improvement. If we're not seeing an improvement, then we go back to the drawing board or we make some shifts if we are seeing an improvement, but then now we have a break in a different area of the chain. It gives us a direction of where we can make our pivots to continually be able to improve the performance, improve the conversions, and improve our return on investment, especially when we're doing things like ad campaigns. But this is really helpful in any and all marketing because then we know what's working and what's not. So I really encourage you to check out the goals because it gives us a lot, like I said, information. We can go into goal flow. And this is what's kind of cool. I mean, of course, this is one where it's it's not even actually live yet. Um, so we have you know direct and YouTube where it's sending here. So this is where I was actually testing it. Um, but it'll give you a visualization of where the traffic's coming from to that funnel. It'll tell you then where the the, the breakdown is on your funnel. It'll give us um, 
lots of really, really good information to help you to improve your convergence. So I encourage you to spend a little more time in Google Analytics uh, because Google Analytics just has so much to offer to help us in making decisions, to help us to improve our conversions. So if you haven't already connected your Kajabi site with Google Analytics, definitely take the time to do that. It's such a powerful tool, gives us so much information. Be sure to check out my other video about that. And then go in there and start looking at your funnels and your pipelines and setting it up in Google Analytics under the goals so that you can have this data and have this information. Now, if you want to dive deeper into Google Analytics, we do have a deep dive mini course that I put together for you. So you could check that out on my website at striveforsavvy.com. You can just simply from the menu, go to our store tab and take a look at all of the different courses and tutorials and resources and free stuff that we have available to you there, as well as our digital CEO pro Academy, where you can go in and have deep dive and some group coaching and work with me one on one. So check that out and go into Google Analytics, play with it, have some fun with it. Our next video, we're also gonna go more into Google Analytics this month, all month this month is Google Analytics. We're gonna work with you on helping you with understanding the data and knowing how to use this to help you grow your online business. And don't forget, this month, the month of April, if you see this video at least in April of 2021, um, it is my birthday month, so I'm offering you a special gift to be able to have a 50% off coupon to any of my online courses, and that includes the Digital CEO Pro Academy, as well as my Google Analytics program. You get 50% off, just use the coupon code BIRTHDAY2021. We'll see you inside the courses and on my website, or we'll see you next week on our next video. Take care.